Hey guys, Melissa here, and I am back with another chain video. I have three more chains here. I have this bead link and figure eight link chain here out of sterling silver. I have a coiled link made out of copper wire, and I also have this swirly decorative chain here that I'll show you. So just stay tuned and I'll show you how. Okay, let's get started. So I have all my tools and materials listed down in the description, but for the most part, you're just gonna need your usual suspects as far as tools. I just have them all handy. And this first chain, it's kind of a decorative chain, so I use bead links and figure eight links to link them together. For this chain, I'm gonna use sterling silver wire. Of course, you can use whatever you want. My figure eight links are already pre-made. When I get a free moment, I go ahead and make a, a nice big batch of them. So my figure eight links are 28 gauge, and I cut the, the wire to one inch. So these are nice and shiny and ready to go. They've been in the tumbler. So I have these all handy. I'll put a, a link up in the corner here. I have a video showing how I made these. For this chain, I just grabbed these pretty little dark blue iridescent beads. There's some type of crystal, but they're bicones. They're four millimeter, so it's gonna make a nice dainty chain. If I'm making a necklace with a nice focal bead or pendant, I like to make nice decorative chains to complement them. You know, using beads of the same color or complementing color. You can use, even change up the beads. But a chain that complements the focal bead, but doesn't outshine the necklace, so to speak. So I use this chain a lot. So it's really simple. And for the bead links, I'm gonna use 22 gauge round. I could use 24, but I decided to use 22 just cause my links are 18 gauge. I didn't wanna go super delicate and then super chunky. So I'm gonna go with the 22. Just kind of pull it out a little bit. And with my bead links, I usually just work off the coil and I make wrapped loops. And I'll also link another card up in the corner here. If you're not familiar with making wrapped loops or bead links and you want more direction, you can go to that video, but I'll just go ahead and make mine here i did waste a little usually as you're making them you get a feel for how much wire you'll need so you you adjust as you go so i cut that off about there that's probably too much but like i said you adjust you might get a little bit of wastage at first I like my loops parallel. Yep, I grabbed too much. So wasteful. Just remember to save your scraps. That's not the prettiest wrapped loop, but... And then what I do is I, I'll make a bunch of bead links at once and then link them together, but I'll go ahead and show you what the chain is going to look like. And at this point, I make sure my figure eight is nice and snug. And there's no gaps. When I make them ahead of time in bulk, they're just loosely made. They're not, uh, you know, completely closed or anything. So when I go ahead and make a chain with it or whatever I'm using it for, that's when I go ahead and make sure it's nice and straight and closed. 
So there's the start of it. So let me go ahead and wrap those up and I'll be back and show you what my chain looks like.
there's the finished chain. It's pretty long. This chain ended up being about 24 inches, but my intent was to make like a bulk chain and use it as needed. These are all I had of these blue beads, so I figured I'd use them all up and make this chain. So I'm just gonna hold on to it and see what I can do with it later on. You know what I did find was this labradorite. I just had it sitting off to the side trying to figure out what I wanted to do with it. I'll wrap this and then I'll incorporate it into a necklace including this chain. So I think that would look really pretty. So yeah, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so for this next chain, I'm going to make a coil link and I'm going to make my coil ahead of time. I'm just going to make one long coil. My links are going to be 20 gauge. My coil is going to be 22 gauge. So these links are going to be made out of 20 gauge, like I said, two loops on either side. And in the middle, there's going to be a coil. You can make these however is convenient for you. You can make your, your link and then coil them, or you can make your coils ahead of time. You can make your coils by hand. I am going to quick use my drill here. So I'm just going to grab a long piece of 20 gauge. Over to the side on one side, I have a vise with a fishing swivel. So up above to the right here, I'll link a, my video to that. But I'm going to quick make a, a nice long coil. I would show you, but my desk is a mess. I'm going to make my coil. I'm going to take my coil off my 20 gauge, and then I'll make my links out of this piece of 20 gauge. I'm just kind of hooking this on the table. This is my, uh, what do you call it? Coiling gizmo. Sloppily feed this into my chuck. Here's my coil. This coil I ended up making is about 18 inches long. So that'll make me a lot of links. Let's see how far I get. So I'm gonna take my coil off the 20 gauge. Easier said than done. Let's grab one end with a tool and slowly start working it off. Once I start getting it off the end on the other side, it should come easy. It should release and just come flying off. Here it goes. There we go. Just be careful not to distort your coil. So there we go. Nice 22 gauge coil. Ready to go on 20 gauge links. And the size of your link is just a matter of preference. Just gonna make a um, loop on one end. It's not a wrap loop. I don't want to make the loop too big because it, we're only using 20 gauge here so you don't want to make it weak. Nice loop here. Kind of determine how much coil you want and then cut it. Make sure to make room for your loop at the end and then make sure you're consistent throughout. The loop itself take approximately a quarter inch. So if I go like a half an inch of coil and another quarter inch, I'm going to try cutting it at three quarter inch here and see where that gets me. All right, so I'll take my coil and I'm going to cut this end off here. Okay, and about a quarter inch, I'm gonna kind of bend it so I can snip it. 
neatly. This one got, kind of got closed up. Snip that off too. Slip that guy on. And then close your loop. So I don't want my loops facing the same way. So I'm going to flip it. Hopefully my loops will be the same size. Not too bad. Not too bad. You can, you can always snip a teeny weeny bit off. And adjust. So there you go. You can make them longer or shorter. Shorter would be cute too. Nice short little coil link. I'm going to go with that and I'm going to go ahead and make a bunch of them. Link them together and see how that looks. So I'll be back. Got all my links assembled. So let's go ahead and make the chain. You could link these guys together, but I'm gonna go ahead and make some jump rings with some 18 gauge wire. I think they would look nice connected with jump rings. Trying to decide what diameter make my jump rings. I just grabbed this um this here coiling gizmo, but measures out three millimeters. Coil this up real quick. Went a little crazy with my coiling gizmo. Any extra I put in a little baggie. I save all my extras in case I need them later. Need a quick junk brain. All these guys go ahead and trim up my jump rings. Yeah, like I said, I'm not sure how many I'll need, so I just made gonna make a bunch and then I'll have extras. Alright, got my jump rings. So next I'll assemble these. Of course, I just cut these jump rings with a flush cutter so we have a flat edge and a tapered edge. With each one I'm going to attach, of course I got to trim off the tapered edge before I close them. Let me go ahead and attach everybody.
All right, I, I finished assembling my chain here. I ended up with about 27 inches, which is great because I wasn't going for a specific, you know, length to make a just a chain on its own. I just made some bulk chain, essentially. So if I want some chain in the future, either like just a plain chain necklace or chain component, I can just, it's really easy to just disassemble and get a specific length that you want. My extra jump rings, I put in a little baggie, 18 gauge, three millimeters, so I know in the future what size they are and if I need to replace them, it's written on the bag. So what I do now is I'm just gonna do some quality control. During the process, I did go through and close all my rings and loops and stuff. I'm just gonna go through again and make sure there's nothing poking, make sure my coils are straight, make sure nobody's cockeyed. Sometimes you get a little end of your coil sticking up too. Just kind of press that down. You don't want anything sharp. Yeah, so this chain has a lot of wire ends to it. You know, it requires a lot of work, but in the long run, it's worth it because I'm going to go ahead and oxidize this and polish it up later. And uh, if you stay tuned till the end, I'll show you the results of that. And you'll find that it makes a really nice, interesting chain. You can even put beaded links in between these coiled links as well to give it even more interest. It's all smooth. Let's move on. All right, my last chain is kind of a variation of a chain I've done before. This link here, you know, opposite facing loops. Well, to make it more decorative and swirly, let me try 18 gauge. I don't know if I'd make a whole chain of this. These are more decorative. If I have a nice fancy focal bead or pendant, say, on a necklace, and then those first few inches going up, I'll have some large swirly chains and maybe some bead links in between that match the focal or whatever. So first I'm going to cut one, see what I get out of an inch and a quarter. And then next I'm going to make one out of an inch and a half. See which one I like better. And you're just playing around. Take your round nose pliers and start making a loop. So here I'm going to grab my loop and just kind of start curving my wire around like that. And then I'm going to come around the other side and make my, my opposing loop. The trick is getting them to kind of match. That one didn't work out too good. Let's move on to the, the inch and a half guy. Make a little swirl and a curve on one side and then the opposite side in the opposite direction. Make a loop and a curve over here. Okay, so scrap the inch and a quarter. We're working on an inch and a half. And you can make them as long or as short as you want. See, let's, let's go a little shorter with this one. Just going back and forth to make them even. That's really cute. That's really cute. I like that. And if it's all wonky, you can take a rawhide mallet so you don't flatten it too much. Unless you want to flatten it, you can go ahead and flatten it. You know. Just a couple of wax will flatten that out nice and give it sturdiness it needs. So let me cut a few out here. Make sure both your ends are flush. I'm not going to make a whole chain with this, but I'll make a few and then I'll go and oxidize it. A 
those look pretty similar. Let me give this a pound. Okay. Okay, got five of them done. Let's go ahead and link these together and see how they look. These figure eights are a little oxidized already. That's okay, I'm gonna oxidize these guys fully and then throw them in the tumbler. Probably attach the next one the opposite way. Like that, yeah. So those don't quite match, so I'm going to close this guy up a little bit. That's better. I used to do that wrong. <laughs> All right. So that looks pretty cute. I really think they'd look cute with um, bead links complementing a necklace that you made. You know, a little chain or the focal necklace with the decorative chain that would be with complementing beads that would look really cute. Well, let me go oxidize everybody and I'll bring them back see how they uh, turned out. So just stay tuned. All right, here they are. I just took them out of the tumbler. So the silver one, sterling silver, I didn't oxidize this one. I just tumbled it so it's nice and shiny. This is how they turned out. Pretty cool looking. And this one. I'm anxious to see what I can make with these. Alright, so that's it for me guys. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought. And I'll see you in the next one.